Hello guys, Oscar Hotel 8, Sierra Tango November Julian here for Off Grid Ham Radio. Today we're talking about portable ham radio with a Microsoft Surface. I've been using the Microsoft Surface for about three years now, since uh, Winterfield Day of 2021. Before that, I was using a Raspberry Pi and Android tablet combination, and later on a micro PC running Windows again with an Android tablet being utilized as a remote screen. If you haven't used a Microsoft Surface for ham radio data modes already, it might be difficult to understand why or what the benefit would be for using such a device. Ultimately, it's about simplicity during deployment. We want to utilize as few components as possible, carry as little as possible, have as few cables as possible, and easily power the device in the field. It also helps to have a device which isn't dependent on the internet and is easy to configure. So stick with me a while and I'll teach you everything you need to know about deploying the Microsoft Surface for data mode communications in the field. All right, guys, let's go. You are listening to the emergency broadcast systems. This station broadcasts emergency news and official information on the air for a sign area. Just a quick reminder that if you're new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and give me a thumbs up if you like the topic I'm currently working on. So what you're looking at now is my ICOM IC705 and my Microsoft Surface Go 2. This radio, along with this tablet, these two make an apex configuration for my portable ham radio ops. Now, although the ICOM IC705 and the Microsoft Surface are my favorite and what I believe to be the best configurations or combinations, they aren't the only combinations. For example, we have the Zygu X6100, which does an excellent job as well. Now we can come back later to talk about the specific pros and cons of different radio and tablet combinations later on, but for now, let's talk about the specs of the specific tablet I'm using. Now at the moment, I have two Microsoft Surface Go tablet models. The first is the base model. That one has the Pentium Gold processor, 4 gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of memory. The other one is a Surface Go 2 LTE. It has an Intel M3 processor, 8 gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of memory. It also has a built-in GPS. In my opinion, the LTE model with the M3 processor is the one we should be focused on. Especially if you're going to be operating JS8 call or FT8 or other modes which require time synchronization. So in this regard, the built-in GPS on the LTE model comes in handy. Now, neither of these PCs is going to win any awards for their gaming prowess. These aren't gaming PCs, they're not powerhouses, but they are perfectly adequate for ham radio data modes. In this clip, we're using the Microsoft Surface Go 2, the basic model with the Pentium Gold processor. We've coupled that with a true SDX radio to carry out a Winlink session. In this next clip, I'm using the TX500 and a Zygu X5105, both connected to the Microsoft Surface Go basic model with the Pentium Gold processor. I'm using the TX500 to run a Winlink session and the X5105 to run FT8. Again, both radios are connected with a hub to the Microsoft Surface Go 2, and the software is running natively on the Surface Go 2. So the point here is only to show you that the Microsoft Surface, even the basic model, is perfectly capable of running multiple apps and thus a capable machine for portable ham radio data modes. All right, guys, let's move on. One of the problems we almost always have in the field with laptops and tablets is how we're going to charge them. It's no secret on the channel that I wholeheartedly believe in either 12 volts DC or USB-C power delivery. The Microsoft Surface has two charging ports. On the Go model, we have a Surface Connect as well as USB-C power delivery. We can charge through either of these ports. Unlike the USB-C power delivery port on the Surface, the Microsoft Surface Connect port uses a proprietary connector. That's the bad news or the only downside. The upside is it leaves the USB-C power delivery port free to connect to our radios and other peripherals. 
Now, one of the upsides to this is we can simultaneously charge and discharge the Microsoft Service Go without using an external hub with the power delivery port to charge while we're out in the field. Realistically, this is just basic cable management and getting rid of the wire mess. Charging with the USB-C power delivery port requires a 45 watt power delivery outlet. These outlets are quite easy to find on Amazon or on eBay. At the moment, I have a 65 watt model and have a 45 watt model. I also have a 100 watt model, but that's a cigarette lighter adapter spec model that I use, for example, in the car. Whichever one of these you decide to use, as long as it's 45 watts or more, you'll be able to charge up your Microsoft Surface Go through its USB-C power delivery port anywhere you choose to. Now, while we're looking at this particular clip, I thought it would be a good time to talk about screen glare. The Microsoft Surface Go definitely has a problem with the screen washing out in direct sunlight. In fact, I think it would probably be fair to say the screen wash is probably its Achilles heel. The way I get around this problem is deploying the Microsoft Surface in the shade, under a shelter, or by shading the screen with my body in between the Surface display and the sun. Now, a fair question would be why not use a computer with a higher NIT rating and daylight readable display? Well, there's a couple of different reasons. Firstly, cost. The Microsoft Surface Go is reasonably priced and uh, most ham radio operators on a budget can afford one. Another reason is current consumption. Computers with a higher NIT rating and daylight readable displays use an enormous amount of power to keep that screen daylight readable. To offset the power usage required to keep that screen daylight readable, Manufacturers will typically install higher capacity batteries, which also leads to more weight while balancing out the runtime. Bottom line, nothing's free. If you want a daylight readable display, well, you're going to pay for it one way or the other, either in weight savings, the operating time of the device, or the cost of a higher spec device. You'll have to choose which one is most important to you. Now I think it's time to talk about protecting the screen and body armor for the Microsoft Surface Go. The simple truth is we aren't always going to be operating from a nice, safe, pleasant environment. Sometimes we're going to be outdoors and of course mishaps happen. The areas of concern on a Microsoft Surface are the display and preventing damage from drops. Of course, this is also true for any laptop or tablet. So my first goal was finding some drop protection for the device. I wanted to make sure that if I dropped the device on the edge or on the face or on the back, that there would be some sort of case to absorb the impact. So I opted for the Kensington Black Belt. The Kensington Black Belt offers a level of drop protection measured by the MILSTD mill standard 810G. That level of drop protection is enough to protect the device if you drop it along one of the edges at an angle on the back of the device. But if you drop it face down directly onto a sharp object right on the screen, the screen will be damaged. But that's a different problem. We'll approach that a little bit later. So in addition to the drop protection, I like the Kensington Black Belt because it offers access to the ports and you don't lose any of the functionality the Microsoft Surface accessories can provide for the device if you choose to add them. All right, let's go ahead and take a moment to talk about screen protection. I decided to kill two birds with one stone. I knew it would be nice to have a keyboard, and I knew that having a keyboard would also protect the screen when the keyboard was closed. So I added the Microsoft Signature Keyboard for the Microsoft Surface Go series. The Signature Keyboard integrates perfectly with the Kensington Black Belt case and connects magnetically to the Microsoft Surface Go. If I didn't know any better, I could easily have believed the same company had developed both of these products, the keyboard and the case for the Microsoft Surface. Two other features I appreciate on the Signature Keyboard are the backlit keys and the integrated mouse pad. Some of you might ask then, why not just use a laptop? 
Well, the Surface is lighter weight, easier to handle, has a touchscreen display, and is much more energy efficient than a laptop generally is. Besides, I very much like this 2-in-1 tablet form factor, which can convert to a laptop rather than being a laptop, which can't act as a tablet. Anyway, having that option and the flexibility is very important to the portable ham radio data modes operator. Now, much of the feedback received from the community since I've been using the Microsoft Surface Go is how do we access the internal GPS on the LTE model? Unfortunately, Microsoft was very short-sighted on this one. Rather than just giving us direct access to the GPS, they actually gave us a Windows Location API. The problem most of us have been having is we didn't have any application that could make use of that API. Well, I've actually found one. Now, before we go on, the reason we would want access or direct access to the GPS is, for example, synchronizing the time on the Microsoft Surface or using that GPS data for APRS, or to send a WinLink position, or things like that. I don't think Microsoft had the portable ham radio operator in mind when they were designing the Windows Location API. Anyway, the utility is called GPS Gate Splitter, and it comes from Fransun. Once set up, GPS Gate Splitter takes the location information from the Windows Location API, and provides that NMEA information on a COM port, making it available to other applications. The setup is actually incredibly simple. Once you install GPS Gate Splitter, you'll get an icon on your taskbar. When you right-click on that taskbar icon, one of the menu items is going to be called Settings. Click that. This will open up the configuration utility. On the first page of the configuration utility, we're going to go to the input screen. There, we're going to choose the input method. And that's going to be called Windows Location API. Once we select that Windows Location API, we'll scroll over with our mouse and click Open. If your GPS was enabled on your device and everything worked perfectly, you'll see a running OK on that screen. Now we'll move over to the second tab, which is called Output. This is where we're going to create our virtual COM port and the type of data that's going to be available on that COM port. Go ahead and activate that drop-down list and select Virtual COM Port November Mic Echo Alpha Filter. Once you've done that, go ahead and click Add. A second little window will pop up now, allowing you to select the COM port you want to use for your virtual COM port. Go ahead and click OK. But then, once you do, you'll have another window pop up. Go ahead and click Allow All NMEA, November Mic Echo Alpha. Once you've selected your port, go ahead and click OK. If you've set up everything correctly, you'll see a running OK on the input screen and the output screen. Now you can close this window. Making a note of the virtual COM port we set up in GPS Splitter, let's go ahead and use WinLink Express to test our GPS. In the menu settings of WinLink Express, we can click GPS, and position reports. At the top of that window, go ahead and select the COM port you set up in GPS Gate Splitter. Once you've done that, click Set. Now near the bottom of that window, you'll be able to see your GPS coordinates. If you can see them, you've set it up correctly. Now we can try the same with GPS to time. Again, utilizing the GPS port you set up in GPS Gate, let's select the COM port and click Run GPS. If you've done everything correctly, 
you'll start to see NMEA sentences displayed in the text boxes. And eventually, you'll see GPS to time auto set your clock on the Microsoft Surface Go. All right, guys, before shutting down this video, I want to talk to you about my recommended apps. Now, before we get to the apps, let's say this. Don't add any unnecessary widgets or tools or utilities to your Microsoft Surface. Keep it lean, clean, and pragmatic. This will help guarantee solid performance in the field. All right, so what you're looking at now is a WinLink session running on the Microsoft Service Go. Naturally, this would mean WinLink Express is one of my favorite apps. It's also one of my favorite tools. Naturally, if I'm running WinLink Express, that means I'm also running the best software modem out there for WinLink. That modem is Vara and Vara FM. For the portable ham radio operator, it's important to get rid of any of the external modems or boxes or cables and all the crap that we normally have to carry to do data modes in the field. A software modem is definitely the most efficient way to go when you're operating MAM Portable. In the current clip you see on the screen, I've got the Microsoft Surface Go, I've got the ICOM IC705, the Microsoft Surface and the 705 are connected wirelessly. You see there's no cables between them. The modem I'm using is Vara FM. And next on my list of recommended apps is JS8 Call. For the record, when I'm not running WinLink, I'm running JS8 Call. The Microsoft Service has more than enough CPU power to decode any of the signals coming in in JS8 Call. The application is lightweight, doesn't take up a lot of energy, and doesn't use a lot of battery power. Now there's another utility or tool that I use for testing antennas or when I'm bored with other things and just need to relax, and that's FT8. For antenna testing with FT8, I prefer to use JTDX. And just as it is with JS8 Call, JTDX is based on WSJTX. Finally, JTDX is extremely lightweight, doesn't eat up a lot of memory, and has an excellent user interface. Now, I do have quite a few other apps running on my Microsoft Surface, but this video is getting kind of long, and I suppose I would prefer to make a separate video on the apps running on my Surface. So let's go ahead and close down this video with my final thoughts. For the portable ham radio data operator operating MAM Portable, I would say the Microsoft Surface is an excellent solution. Not just the Microsoft Go models, but the higher spec models as well. Anyway, the Microsoft Surface is a solution to a problem most operators don't even know we have. That problem is not having Android apps enabling the use of Android devices in the field. Now, although Android support is getting better, for those of us who still need even more or higher level of support for our ham radio emergency communications, the Microsoft Surface, or at least Windows computers, are probably our best bet. I'm not saying I like it, I'm just saying it is what it is. So. Until the ham radio community starts to transition over to Android and iOS devices, I'm going to stick with the Microsoft Surface. All right, guys, let me know what you think. The only thing I ask is that you be polite. Be sure to check the description for the links to my blog posts on the Microsoft Surface, also the pinned comment in this video. All right, guys, if you like what I'm doing, if you like the content I'm creating, please let me know by leaving me a comment, a thumbs up, or even a super thanks to let me know. And if it's not too much to ask, please share this video and associated blog posts somewhere or with someone who might enjoy it. Rock and roll, guys. You all are absolutely awesome. Thanks for watching. Ciao.